Hey everybody, this is Bradley here with God's Country Hunting and Fishing. And today, I, uh, my wife got a new bow uh, to get ready here before hunting season. And we had a few things to go over. And she already had some arrows from her other bow that we wanted to set up with this new bow. Uh, just to keep from spending that extra money. And we're going to refletch these arrows. And I wanted to show y'all something. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and in a, my past experience, I've been shooting... For years, I shot four-inch veins, and I went to two-inch blazer veins and started putting helical on them. And I'm just going to show you real quick uh, how, how you can set these arrows up and put some helical on these two-inch veins to help increase your accuracy. So to show you what we've got here, we already stripped these, uh, these arrows. These are Maxima Hunter 250s. These are... Uh, about a 400 uh, spine arrow and these are some older arrows like I said that I had that we shot in the past we already stripped the fletching the old fletchings off of these so we're ready to fletch these but I'll show you I have another arrow here and we still got a couple fletchings on it and I'll show you how I take these fletchings off real quick uh, I don't have a uh, or most people don't have a fletching scratch off tool or laying around but if, if you do that's fine or you can order one online but I just take a razor blade and cut these fletchings off just be real careful not to cut yourself with it but just a plain old razor blade and you can run it three or four times up this arrow get all the old glue off and uh, once you get it fairly clean you can take and just run it, kind of hold it upright, 45 degree angle, and just run it over that old glue a little bit, and it'll scrape that glue and that fletching right off. So once you get that off good, I just normally, if it's not smooth enough, I'll take a little piece of sandpaper and just run back and forth down the shaft right here until I get all that glue off. So what we've got here is a boning archery fletching tool. It's a little three degree fletcher, just uh, right here from boning archery. I think I picked this up at Bass Pro or Cabela's One. I don't remember exact cost. I know it was under $50 at the time. I've had it several years. There's several different ones on the market and you can get different ones. This is just a a real nice cheaper plastic one it's not going to cost you a lot of money and uh, I'll show you how we set this up so right here on the back of this has a knob and this knob is one two and three and you'll set it to one so it's ready to go and you'll put your arrow right in there and depending on which wrist you're shooting she's going to be shooting a whisker biscuit so since this is a wife's bow, we're gonna, she wants some pink fletchings on here, so we're going to use two pinks, one white, and our offset white color is going to be up at the top when she knocks her arrow. So I'm going to set this arrow knock up to where this white one is going to be the number one fletching that goes in. And the only thing I've made a mistake a couple times fletching these is you want to make sure that this arrow is pushed down in the fletcher good and or in the base and the little fletching top tool here you're gonna there's two sides to it and there's a side that I'm not sure if you can see this right here but there's a side that has a little lip sticking out on the bottom right here you're gonna put your fletching in from that side and just press it in right there It's going to be set up just like that. So you got your fletching here on 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 the upside. So when it goes in, the, the side sticking out is going to be right here on the top. And we're going to put a little glue on it. And what I found that I really like most, a lot of pros use this, a lot of bow shops use it, is the G5 G Lock Blue Glue. It's pretty good stuff. Now you don't want to put too much because it's going to smear. All you want to do is just coat the inside of this uh, 
vein or fletching, whatever you're using here. And I'm just coating it and kind of smearing a little bit on the inside. And you don't want to get it all over your fletching tool either. But there's really, uh, this is a pretty easy job here. There's not a lot to it. So I just put a, a thin coat on there. And this, this fletching top tool here has these little guards. And I'll turn it this way so you can see what I do. But you, you can set it down like this and put your glue on if you want. And then when you flip it over, it just goes right in here on the top of this bar. And your little guards go right on the side. And you just press it down like that. And when you press it down, you want to make sure it's, it's pushed down against the, the frame down there. And you want to make sure your arrow's pushed down against the, the knock holder. And you want to let it set for 10, 15 seconds till that glue sets just a second on that arrow. And uh, you, you don't want it, if there's any residual glue in, in the little tool, you definitely don't want it to harden to the uh, blazer vein or any other vein that you're using before. But you just want to let it sit there for just a second. And then we'll ease it off. Check our results, make sure everything's good. Now normally this smears just a little bit or a little bit of run out. And it really wouldn't hurt nothing to leave it like it is, but just to make it a little bit better or smoother or perfect, whatever you want to call it, I like to wipe mine clean. I'm not pressing on it. I'm just running a paper towel down the edge. I don't want to move that vein. I want it sitting right where that tool put it. But I'm just smoothing that glue out that pressed out from under that vein right there. Now you can see it's sitting in the holder. And I'll show you real quick. So you, you can see the little twist on it, the three degree helical offset on there. And for the number two, you're just going to turn it to the number two setting. We're going to do the same thing again. What I always like to do before I put the laser vein in is wipe any residual glue off of this little top tool and the little vein holder. I always run the paper towel through it and then run it up and down it to take any glue out of there because that, that glue will build up in there and it'll grab your vein. It's really not that much to it. You'll figure it out. If you ever mess one up, you'll, you'll fix it. And uh, we're just going to set the, one of the pink ones up now. I'll set it down here. We need these razor blades anymore. And we're going to run just a dab of glue down it. I don't get in a real big hurry with this. I just ease my glue down it. Now you can do this with four inch veins, but you'd have to have a different tool. Uh, this one is for the two inch blazer veins. So I'm pressing it down, lining it up, making sure the making sure the arrow's in. You can see right here there's some little knot, uh, little side, uh, little guards, rails right here on the side that guide it in. So you can see when I just press it down, it doesn't snap in place or anything, but it's pretty tight fit. So as long as you got your arrow down, this push, push down, you want to press this down against the arrow so it's holding it down and let it sit for 10 seconds or so, 15 seconds. And then we'll take it, ease it right off. You got a little tab right here. You can just ease up on that tab. Once it pops off of there, once again, I'll Take any extra glue off with a little paper towel, just dab it off. Make us a nice slick arrow. And we have two on there. It's got a nice, nice little twist to it there. And you just want to make sure all three on each arrow is set the same, you know, and you want all your arrows uh, relatively the same. What I always do is I'll set up, you know, all my arrows, and I'll shoot 
all of them and if i have trouble with one grouping then i'll go back to the drawing board with that but most of the time if you put this three degree twist on these blazer veins they will more than stabilize your arrow and uh you just want to make sure each time that that's in the next setting I highly recommend, uh, you know, I, I've shot four inch feathers, I've shot four inch veins, and, and when I went to these uh, two inch veins with this helical, my patterns tightened up drastically. Uh, you can shoot fixed broadheads, you can shoot cut on contact broadheads, which is what we shoot. And uh, we'll go over some more of that. Just pop it right out of there. And I'll show y'all real quick. Finished product. And that's going to rotate. Just like that. It's going to put some, some rotation on this arrow. It's going to help stabilize it. She's nice and slick, ready to go. Okay, so we got Ms. Danielle, my wife, with us, and uh, we got our air fletched up. We just finished that, and I'll show you what we got here. We got the nice helical three degree on them on the Carbon Express Maxima Hunter 250s. We're going to test these out, see how this goes, and this is what she's going to be hunting with 100 grain Magnus Stingers, four blade with a bleeder back here. Cut on contact. Now, I've shot most of the broadheads, uh, most of the older ones that were on the market, muzzies, uh, mechanicals, everything. The only deer I've ever lost that I hit in the right spot was with a mechanical broadhead. 30 yards, hit him in, hit him in the shoulder, hit the blade, didn't penetrate and uh, I lost that deer because of that. So since then, I've either shot muzzies or some type of fixed blade, uh, shot NAP, shot several different ones, but these Magnus Stingers, I've went to them, and I'll say this, I, I haven't, in some instances, I haven't had quite as much blood with these as like a muzzy, but I have not lost a deer. The penetration that you get with these, even if you hit a shoulder blade, it, it's going through it. It's going to blast right through it. So, uh, wife's been shooting a crossbow for a few years. She's killed some deer, killed a nice, uh, what was that deer, eight, seven, mm -hmm. eight, eight point last year. And she's killed some hogs up to 300 pounds with a crossbow. She's bow hunted some. She's never killed a d deer with a compound bow. So she wanted to bow hunt. We're setting her up with this. And this is her new bow that she got today it's a nice little bow Matthews mission uh, shoots really nice and that's what she's gonna be shooting this year so she's got a few weeks to get ready before hunting season we're gonna get her started tomorrow practicing and uh, we'll kind of follow along on this journey this year we're gonna try to get some good hunting videos we're gonna try to get some bow hunts on on camera, uh, just got a tactic cam in today. We're going to be using some uh, on the bow hunting setups. We got some GoPros set up, and we're going to try to make some pretty good videos. So y'all follow us, stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, like, shares, comments are always good. But definitely be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell, change it to all, so you'll see our videos when they come up. We're going to Colorado in three weeks. And we're starting out with a with an elk hunt, but we might slip a bow hunt in before we go. Uh, Arkansas, where we hunt a lot, opens the 26th of September this year. So we may get up there the weekend before we leave for Colorado, and hopefully, if we get a little bit of cool weather, we might get on some deer. So stay tuned. God's Country Hunting and Fishing, keeping it real.